I wish you all a blessed Christmas. May the season of love, joy and peace continue through the rest of the year and always in your life for you and your families. A warm and a blessed Christ-centered Christmas on behalf of Shiloh Faith Point Harvesters Church. May God bless you. Can we give the Lord a hand and a praise for this wonderful year we have. He has been so good to us. And we have experienced his grace throughout this year, right? Last Christmas, we were in Vepri. And this Christmas, we are here. It makes a world of difference. God has been good. And I pray that uh, this Christmas will be filled with all of God's goodness and grace in your lives. Okay, I have a very brief message for you. And the title of my message is The Mystery of Christmas. All right, so what is a mystery? The English dictionary says something that is difficult or impossible for us to understand or explain. That's what mystery is. So one of the mysteries of the modern world is the mystery of Bermuda Triangle. I'm sure most of you would have heard about Bermuda Triangle, right? So it's also sometimes called as the Devil's Triangle because of this superstitious mystery that uh, revolves around that story. It's real, it's a section of the North Atlantic Ocean where more than 50 ships and 20 planes have just mysteriously disappeared. Nobody knows what has happened, it just vanished into thin air, right? British Atlanta, a training um, a ship with over 250 trainees and sailors on board just mysteriously disappeared, you know, planes, 27 passengers, you know, have just disappeared as if it's flown into Mars. And the puzzling fact about this uh, whole uh, mystery is that uh, the ships that disappeared uh, just disappeared in calm waters, did not even send a distress signal, right? So the bizarre disappearances attributed to the triangle uh, have been linked to everything uh, from alien abduction to sorcery and to some kind of a dark energy and nobody is able to resolve it. And that's why it's a mystery. That's what you call a mystery, right? So you come across the word mystery in the Bible as well, especially in the New Testament, you come across the word mystery in few places. But I want to just show you just one place where you find the word mystery. It's in Colossians chapter 1 verse 6. Colossians chapter 1. I'm sorry. Um, twenty six Colossians chapter one, verse twenty six. There's a correction there. It's twenty six. Okay, let's read this. The mystery which has been hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed. It's now has been revealed to his saints. I read this again. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to this saints. Okay, so now you see the words here, the mystery <clears throat> and hidden from ages. And then it says, now has been revealed to his saints, right? So in Greek, again, the word mystery here in Greek is mysterion. It's slightly different from the mystery in English, right? It's not a total mystery. Uh, the one that Greek defines here is not something which is very difficult or impossible for us to know, but it's something that can be known through revelation. And this revelation comes only from God. And only God can reveal this mystery at a particular dispensation of time in history. That's what the Greek mystery tells us. It's not this, this whole thing that's shrouded in mystery that nobody is able to explain or understand. But the mystery that the Bible talks about is something that can be only revealed by God. It can be only known through revelation. Right? And that tells us that God is the revealer of secrets. There are 600 titles and names of God in the Bible. 
But there's one interesting name of God which you will find in Daniel. I'm sure you all remember the story of Daniel when Nebuchadnezzar had a strange dream he was not able to interpret. He called all the wise men, the soothsayers, the ast astrologers from the kingdom and not one person was able to interpret the dream and then Daniel comes forward. And then the king looks at Daniel who stands before Nebuchadnezzar and said, do you think you will be able to tell my dream and interpret it? And this is where Daniel responds. He says, no wise man, no sorcerer, no diviner, no enchanter will be able to tell your dream and interpret my king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. That's how he names God. There is a God in heaven who's a revealer of mysteries and he will be able to tell your dream and interpret. There's a beautiful name you find about God in Daniel chapter 2 verse 28. He's the revealer of mysteries. So you understand who's the one who reveals? So the mystery in the Bible has been set. God knows it all throughout. But he chooses an appointed time, the dispensation of God's time, he chooses to reveal. He chooses to unravel the mystery. Right? And that's why Paul is talking about the mystery that has been revealed to you and me. That's the mystery of the Messiah. The mystery of Jesus, which has been hidden, shrouded, wrapped. It was an enigma. It was a puzzle. They couldn't really understand. If you are living in the Old Testament, you had no clue who Jesus was, who the Messiah was. Nobody was able to unwrap or unravel this mystery. It has been hidden from ages, from generations. But now, for you and for me, it's been revealed. That's what Paulus says. It's the mystery of the Messiah, a Redeemer who will come and save his people. Hallelujah. Redeemer will come and save his people. So the whole world has waited for this Messiah. There was a sense of hope and longing among the Jewish uh, community. For a very long time, they were expecting the Messiah. There were times where the hopes were very high, you know, but there were times where the hopes slowly faded away. You know, in different uh, dispensations you will find all through the scriptures. Um, <clears throat> just to give you an example, when uh, Israel was in the exile, when they went as captives into Babylon, right, it was the most dark period of history, you know, for the Jewish community. But when they came out, we had uh, Monica read that verse this morning. You know, they were filled with joy because it's unthinkable. It's next to impossible. No nation has ever survived having been wiped off and gone into slavery and then come back and rebuild but it's happened right and when they came back as a nation they were restored the hopes of a messiah was revived they were all expecting that the messiah is going to come at that time because something incredible unbelievable has happened you know but as you progress, you will find there was corruption and they begin to, uh, you know, uh, backslide and they missed out on the promise and the vision that God has given. As you come closer and closer to Malachi, the end of the Old Testament, you find a bleak history, Jewish history. And God goes into obscurity. There is absolute silence, right, for the next 300 years, right? The hopes of a Messiah again faded away. But when you come to the Gospels, again, you will find the hopes of the Messiah has risen. It's revived. How do I know that? There's a man called Simeon who was much advanced in age, but he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and it was revealed to him that he will not die until he sees the Messiah. So the hope of the Messiah has been revived once again. And there was a woman called Anna, the prophetess, in the temple who was a widow praying, looking forward to the redemption of Israel. Jerusalem. So there was a time again in history where the hopes of the Messiah was revived and there was a much expectation among the people and anticipation that the Messiah would come. But nobody had no clue who that Messiah is. The mystery that was hidden for ages and for generations has finally been revealed. That's what Paul is says. Paul's saying here. Now it's been revealed to us. And guess what? It's been revealed at his birth. Jesus, the Messiah, finally been revealed. You understand, you know, how important you and I are in the part of this dispensation, the significant place in history that you and I belong to. 
You are so privileged that today we know who Jesus is. So Christmas is celebrating Jesus, the promised Savior of the world. The mystery is revealed now. Now, if you see, God himself is a mystery, isn't it? God himself is a mystery. And in Exodus chapter 3, uh, Moses is having a very interesting conversation with God. God is trying to persuade Moses to go, to go and bring the people out of bondage from Egypt, you know, back to the promised land. <clears throat> so Moses is giving all sorts of excuses and finally Moses says, Lord, what do I tell these people? You're saying that you are the God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But if the people ask me, what is his name? What do I tell them? And he says, tell them, I am that I am. The very passage tells us, it emphasizes the mystery of God. It says, what do you understand from I am that I am? You could understand nothing. You can't rationalize it. You can't explain it. The very passage tells us it is impossible for us to define the nature of God in human words. God himself is a mystery, right? So it seems like God is saying, you know what? I can't really tell you who I am, you know? It sounds like an evasive, circular, you know, non-committal definition. I am, I am I. How do you like it? Who are you, Lord? I am I. So... What God is saying is that when Moses asks for God's name, the description of his name and character, so that he can go and tell the people that this is the God who has come to save them, Moses was taught that it is impossible to learn this all at once. But God will choose to reveal it gradually. But man will ultimately come to know who this God is. But he's not going to know it all at once. God is going to reveal it so gradually. So it's, it's in fact, it's a positive answer where God defines himself as he is the one who is real, who is existent and who is with them. But God would be what he would be from time to time. Each age would discover fresh attributes of his being. God would be what he would be from time to time. And each age would discover fresh attributes of his being. But he still remains a mystery. You cannot understand who he is. God still remains a mystery, right? So God is a mystery. God's word is a mystery. God's prophecies are a mystery. And unless God chooses to reveal himself, you and I could never know. You and I could never know. Do you understand the privilege of knowing Jesus? The eyes. You opened your eyes. The, the God of the world has made the, made the people blind. The age it's a dark age. Right? But yet God chose you and me and opened our eyes of understanding. Today, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Not just a baby that was born, a savior who has come into the world, who has redeemed us. And we have a personal experience. And this mystery has been revealed to you and me. What a privilege. What a privilege. So unless God chooses to reveal, God is a mystery. God's word remains a mystery. God's revelation, his prophecies remain a mystery. Unless he reveals it to us, we can never understand. Bible is, is an amazing book. It's God's word, packed with mysteries, right? Uh, I'm sure I told you sometime back, I was doing a, a, a course, Biblical Hebrew, for eight months uh, from Israel Institute of Biblical Studies. You know, and my teacher was a rabbi, was a rabbi, was a Jewish rabbi. You know, his name was Rabbi Don Peterman, right? He never ceases to amaze me. Every class when he teaches, man, it just takes your breath away. He knows the Bible, you know, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, you know, that's what they believe in. They don't talk about New Testament. It offends them when you say Testament, old and new. For them, that's the only Bible, right? So, but he was a linguistic teacher. He taught us only the language of Hebrew, right? And, uh, I mean, it just amazes you because he, he knew the whole Old Testament, the whole Tanakh by heart. You know, he can even, he has even memorized the maps. He can tell you the geographical location of places. It was amazing to even just listen to him, the way he speaks, right? And he always tell me, you know, the English Bible, you know, it's, it's so plain. It's black and white. He says the Hebrew Bible is in color with Dolby sound effect. That's how he says. 
you guys are missing so much and always people who know linguistics and language will always talk very superior about the original text he knows the bible in hebrew he'll say it is the original tongue the holy tongue the tongue in which god spoke you know in english you guys miss out so much of those translations there is so much of mysteries that's there and man the first class i listened to him and it was just ooed me and he said i'll tell you a simple example let's go to the very first book first chapter first verse in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth in the beginning he said the word in the beginning in hebrew is bereshit bara elohim okay uh, bara is creation created elohim is god you know that right bereshit is in the beginning that's how the english bible has translated but the hebrew bible says bereshit bara elohim if it has to be in the beginning as it's in the english bible the hebrew should have been bara sheet because the definite article the in the should be ha in hebrew right a little bit just bear with me a little bit bear with me all right the definite article is the is ha bara sheet okay bara sheet bara sheet bara elohim but it's that's not how it is in the hebrew bible it's bara sheet bara elohim which means in a beginning and then he said this with god there are many beginnings this is not the only beginning it's wrong to translate as in the beginning it's in our beginning wow with the rabbinic literatures if you read man there's packed with so much of mysteries they can tell you so much but we are happy with our english bibles we don't know hebrew we get the message we get the meaning we understand it we believe it with all our hearts right so what i'm trying to explain to you i'm talking about the mystery right so let's allow me to speak some of the mysteries of the bible right because that's where all this has been hidden from ages but it's been revealed to you and to me right because every mystery revolves around one person and that's jesus there's nothing else you unwrap that mystery box jesus becomes real to us right so bible scholars say if you study the hebrew words their roots would have some fascinating insights if you study the hebrew words right okay methuselah quiz who is methuselah the man who lived the longest the longest life span you have do you know how many years he lived no 969 easy to remember 969 so the word methuselah means meth or math is death shalakh is to bring okay so the word methuselah means his breath his death will bring forth you understand so his father was enoch who was enoch the man who walked with god absolute amazing testimony about a man from the old testament a man who walked with god and he was not found nobody knows where he went but he disappeared he walked so close to god at some point of time god and him became one and he disappeared the man who walked with god so enoch's son was methuselah and methuselah was born when methuselah was born god gave a revelation to enoch and god said as long as the son is alive you know this i will spare this world but when the when the son dies when methuselah dies it will bring forth the great flood so when methuselah was born enoch had the revelation that his death shall bring forth the great flood so you can understand the the tension the parents would have had in raising a kid like that <laughs> if you had coughed man <laughs> if you had had fever so but you see that's why methuselah lived the longest what does it tell about the mercy of god the longest man who lived on planet god waited and waited and waited and waited that talks about how merciful and gracious god is but methuselah did die and the day and the year he died his death brought forth the great flood on the year he died right so it's interesting right it's interesting the year that methuselah died the flood came as god prophesied so if there is such significance in methuselah's name let's examine the other names to see what may lie behind so they say there is gospel in genesis okay some of the bible scholars have done amazing work i've just picked up from the genealogy from adam to noah that's all you know from genesis 1 to genesis 6 okay adam's son is seth you know he had two sons cain and abel and the third one was seth adam's son is seth and his generation is enosh the other guy and then kenan and mahalal 
and Jared, Enoch, Enoch San Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. Okay, so Hebrew, the meaning of those names in Hebrew is Adam's, Adam means man, set appointed, mortal, Enosh, Kenan is sorrow, Mahalel, the blessed God, Jared means shall come down, Enoch means teaching, Methuselah, his death shall bring, Lamech is the despairing, Noah, you all know, Noah means rest or comfort. What does that bring us to? Read that. Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing rest. I'll read that to you again. Ah, yeah, God deserves a better hand of praise, yes? Man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring the despairing rest. I want you to note those three words, four words. Blessed God shall come down. Blessed God shall come down. That's the theme of the Bible. That's the big message of the Bible. The blessed God. God will come down from ages to ages, from dispensation after dispensation. There was a long expectation. There was an awaited savior. People's hearts were longing because they knew they had the revelation, but they just couldn't unravel it. They just couldn't understand it. But there was an expectation. You read through the history of the Jewish people, right? What we call as the salvation history where God comes to save his people in regular intervals. In different season, right? The salvation history talks about God coming down to save his people. We read that in Exodus, right? God tells Moses, I've heard the cry of my people. I've seen their misery. I've seen their sorrow. And therefore, I have come down. You see those things happening time and again. The blessed God shall come down to save his people. You come to judges. God sees that. Right? The people were in oppression for 20 years, 30 years, and God comes down to save. So the big theme of the Bible is the blessed God shall come down and give us the despairing ones, the despondent ones. He gave them rest. The blessed God shall come down. So all through the Bible, you will find that God came in different stages of history to deliver his people. However, there was a greater prophecy that awaited the Messiah, the Savior will come to redeem his people once and for all and reign in their hearts and establish his kingdom. It awaited a greater prophecy, a greater time where the Messiah, the Redeemer will come to save his people and reign and establish his kingdom in our hearts and in our lives. And that's what Jesus has done. That's Christmas. God has come to reign in our hearts. The blessed God has come down to save us, to redeem us, to reign in our lives and in our hearts. It's been a mystery all through the ages of time. Let's see how the prophets understood this mystery. Let's see how the prophets understood this mystery. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. 1 Peter chapter 10. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Concerning the salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of the Messiah and the glories that would follow. How did the prophets of the old understood this? Concerning the salvation, concerning the Messiah, concerning the Savior who is going to come. The prophets who spoke of this, they spoke of this. They spoke of this that was to come, searched intently with greatest care, trying to find out the time and stay. Even they could not understand. That's why they were trying to search. They spoke about it. But they weren't really clear. They weren't really sure. 
they don't know what this all means they were trying to search intently trying to so carefully with greatest care trying to find out what is this talking about who is this person on what circumstances is going to come where is he going to appear on what time what is this all about oh, who is this messiah why is he going to suffer why is this glory what is this glory that's going to follow they spoke about the salvation they spoke about the redeemer they spoke about the messiah but it was still a mystery they couldn't really understand it that's why they're trying to search they were trying to search they were trying to search and find out because each prophet saw something different you know that right each prophet saw something very different let's go through some of those old testament messianic prophecies in 5 minutes i would close isaiah 7:14 isaiah saw a young virgin with a child and a virgin giving birth to a child when and and he is called emmanuel god with us now who is this child is he of a normal birth or a supernatural birth is he a human being where in the world a virgin has given birth i mean who is this person i mean it says emmanuel it says that he is god but is he a human being is he god but how can a virgin give birth now zechariah saw it differently zechariah saw zechariah saw behold your king comes to you he is just and having self lowly how can a king be lowly a king has to be majestic a king has to be powerful a king should be imposing but it says a king is lowly how can he be lowly a king should come riding if he has to conquer if he has to bring salvation save his people he should come riding on a horse why is he coming riding on a donkey what kind of a king he is why is he so lowly micah saw it differently you bethlehem bethlehem out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people bethlehem of all the bethlehem is one of the smallest agricultural village in juda a king should be born in one of the capital cities of the world that's where you find kings being born macedonia alexander the great all kings are born in those you know popular famous cities bethlehem how can bethlehem out of bethlehem how can there be a ruler how can this ruler be a shepherd daniel in his night vision saw the son of man a son of man coming in the clouds of glory who was this son of man moses told i saw him as a prophet and god will raise a prophet among you jacob said he's from the tribe of juda david saw him as a king with the eternal kingdom isaiah again sees him as a suffering servant somebody who suffers can you see that so complex how do we understand this this person this messiah it's a complex puzzle for them to unravel or even to understand who this messiah is is he is he a king is he somebody who's vulnerable can he suffer you know where does he come from in bethlehem you know how can he be is he a human being is he born of a virgin can you see how complex it is that's why they were trying to intently search and find out and understand what is this all about who is this messiah it's a mystery it's a complex puzzle that's why imagine if you are in the old testament times christ was simply a mystery to you that's why we are so privileged we are so privileged that we have found the messiah jesus the mystery has been revealed what has been hidden from ages from generations to come paul right has been revealed to you and to me however there was one prophecy that gave that brought the revelation of messiah to the forefront just one prophecy I close with that. There's one prophecy that God gave that brought the revelation of Messiah to the forefront. Let's read Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. And it says, "And through your seed shall all the nations of the earth will be blessed." God told Abraham, "Through your seed all the nations of the world will be blessed who's the seed it's not seeds it's not talking about the descendants of abraham not uh, the sons of isaac or jacob or you know it's not about the descendants of abraham it's not seeds it's seed one seed through your seed and that one seed is christ through your seed the entire nations of the world will be blessed the whole world every caste every color creed every one who calls on the name of jesus shall be saved and through that one seed it will come from you 
the whole nations of this world will be blessed. Abraham did not know it. It was still a mystery for him. Abraham knew that there is a seed that's going to come out of him, but he didn't know who this person was. Right? But he understood this is the seed that God spoke right from the beginning. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. God said it right at the beginning. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. After the fall, sin and corruption and confusion you know, and curses entered God had a beautiful promise for mankind. In the midst of all the chaos, God said, no, there's come a redeemer. There's going to be redemption. I will restore all of this. I will restore this fall. The seed of the woman will come. So Abraham knew it. Adam and Eve knew it. So imagine the joy that they would have had when they first had their child. Cain and Abel, they would have probably thought, man, this is the seed. It's the seed of the woman. He's the one who's going to restore order. He's the one who's going to bring back, break that curse. He's the one who's going to redeem the fallen mankind. He's the one who's going to save us all. They expected that one of them would be the seed. But when Abel was killed by Cain, the hopes were dashed. The one probably would have, would have probably been the seed, the possible seed died. And the one who killed made himself disqualified and their hopes were dashed. And then they had set. And literally Eve said, God has appointed a seed for me in the place of Abel. And their hopes were revived. And immediately after a couple of chapters, you, feel, you find in Genesis chapter 6, man has steeped into you know, a moral law like you can ever ma imagine. God says, they have become so wicked, I'm going to wipe them off. Oh man. The hopes have dashed again. But still God chooses to preserve a seed in the ark. Noah. And then they come out. And you see God has always preserved. And finally God says it's through your seed. Abraham knew it. That the seed that's going to come out of him. Is the seed that God promised Adam and Eve. With one verse we will close. Let's read Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and 9. We'll just finish with that. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and 9. So Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are the children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. Announced the gospel in advance to Abraham? What do you understand from that? Where was the gospel? Come on, what? Wait a moment. Was the gospel preached to Abraham in advance? Yes. What was the gospel? Through your seed, the whole nations will be blessed. That's the gospel. That God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel, preach the gospel to Abraham in advance, that all nations will be blessed. So those who rely on faith, and Abraham believed it with all his heart. Abraham believed that this seed, he believed, he trusted that God has a provision and through this seed that comes out of his body, that God will reverse the order of curse. Curse will be broken, sin will be erased, salvation will be brought and redemption will come. And Paul says, and all those who have that faith like Abraham become his children and inherit the blessings. So simple gospel is, right? Abraham had that faith to believe in that seed and he believed that he is the one who is going to redeem mankind. And if you and I have the faith like Abraham had, not just the Jews, but anyone who has the faith which Abraham had, which he believed, he will be blessed. And we are all blessed. Because we have at some point of time come to put our faith in Jesus. They put their faith in God, in Jesus, though they didn't know him. But we are privileged. It has been revealed to us and we have put our faith in real with Jesus. Right? So, I conclude. I conclude that all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And we have experienced this blessing and we are blessed because of who Jesus is. The mystery of the Messiah was finally fully revealed to us, right? 
There's a belief, there's been always a belief in the awaited savior. The Hindu scriptures spoke about it. They spoke about the 10 avadars or incarnation. They believe that nine of them is over. They await the Kalki avadar who would reestablish the world with peace and righteousness. They are still waiting. Zoroastrian texts talk about a very interesting prophecy about the Messiah. They say the final Mitra will be born of a virgin. Can you believe Zoroastrians have a prophecy which says, you know, Messiah will be born of a virgin when the age of 30, he will, there will be a cosmic sign in the sky which will announce his identity. They are still waiting. Islam is waiting for the Mahdi, the rightly guided one who will appear and will bring the world of injustice and equality. They are waiting for their 12th Imam, the irony of all the Jews, the Jews who have received the chosen ones who possess the sacred texts are still waiting. Guess what? Gentiles, you and me, have received it. Wow. All oh, the whole world is waiting. But you and I have received it. The mystery that's been hidden for ages have been revealed to you. Aren't you privileged? Aren't you blessed? Who revealed it to you? He came in person. Otherwise, it all makes nonsense to you. It's nonsensical. All this preaching would have been nonsensical to you. Who revealed it to you? Not a preaching, not a message. Jesus came in search of you. He came just for you. He came looking for you when you were lost. And he revealed himself to you. The mystery was revealed to you. That's why the angels said, Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is the Messiah. That's the proclamation of the great mystery. The world has heard and continues to hear the proclamation of the great mystery that Jesus is the Savior of all, the one who has come to redeem us from sin and curse. He's reversed the order. And as long as we believe and keep our trust in Him, keep our trust in Him, we are the blessed ones. Amen. Right on time. Let's close in prayer.